So good morning from day two on the West Highland Way. It's about eight o'clock in the morning. It's a really chilly and frosty start here in Drimmon. Just got a coffee from the local bakery. So we've got our caffeine in and we're walking about 15 miles today uh, to a place called the Ben Lomond Bunkhouse. On the main road at the moment as we leave Drimmon to reconnect with the West Highland Way path. Both went to bed about 8 p.m. last night because we were absolutely shattered. So we've had about 12 hours sleep. Well, 11 and a half hours sleep. and. Uh, yeah, it's very hazy and kind of frosty at the moment, so let's uh, crack on with things. So we're an hour into the morning's walk and I'm loving absolutely every moment of it. Started out really frosty, walking through some frosty fields and we climbed up through a pine forest and the smell coming off the pines, well, it really kind of clears your head in the morning. It's just lovely. It smells really Christmassy actually. And now beneath us, because we're quite high up now, is the most amazing misty, foggy cloud inversion. And I just feel so privileged to be able to be witnessing that right now. So we've just reached that crossroads moment at the point on Conic Hill where the path splits off into two. The West Highland Way continues around, or you can go up the steep slope but to the top of Conic Hill where the views are meant to be spectacular. The thing is, as you can probably see over my shoulder still, uh, beneath us is still ensconced in a thick cloud of misty fog. So uh, it's a bit of a gamble as to whether we're actually going to see much once we get to the top. But after a bit of a five minute deliberation as to what to do, we are going to scramble on up there and, and see what the view's like. So uh, yeah, I'll show you what, what we encounter when we get up there in a moment. What I will say is that this path is actually very, very narrow and there's lots of kind of crumbling rocks underneath. So, and it's pretty windy now too. So. If you are heading up, make sure you take caution and keep an eye on what's underneath you because, yeah, it's pretty scrambly up here. Oh wow, and there I was questioning whether we would get much of a view from up here, but my goodness, look at that, that is absolutely spectacular. Look at it, that, that is absolutely amazing. So just making our way down from Conic Hill now, what we actually decided to do is retrace our steps a little bit. We made it to the very top and wow, the view was spectacular and hopefully the drone footage will come out and you can see that. But um, rather than going straight down from there, which apparently you can do and there is a path, we did decide to retrace our steps. Only about five minutes to come back down the official West Highland Way path around because I just don't want to take any risks today and the visibility isn't very good as you get a bit lower. So yeah, playing it safe and uh, scrambling bring back down the other side of Conic Hill now and the conditions and the view is still amazing, it really is. So 
So we are about four hours and 20 minutes into today's walk now, and we just left Balmaha, where we had a very tasty lunch in like a cafe there. I had a very nice hearty bowl of vegetable soup and a coffee, and we were sat next to a fire, and that was uh, yeah, rather nice and a good way to recharge the batteries. One thing I do want to say, actually, is um, having completed Connick Hill this morning, it really is quite technical as you come down there and you've got to watch where you're putting every foot. And uh, when we were planning this walk, quite a few people, particularly in the Facebook groups, were keen to offer advice and say that on day one to walk on to Balmaha. And I'm so glad we didn't do that. And I'm really glad that I ignored that advice because it would have made for a really, really brutal day. And uh, it was quite tiring actually, that conic hill stretch and coming down. So um, yeah, I'd, uh, I'd advise against walking to Balmaha on day one. And also if you're going that quick and, and forcing yourself to complete that distance, it does mean, I think in my opinion anyway, that you miss some of the scenery and you don't really take time to appreciate it. For example, earlier on at the top of Connick Hill, we just sat there for about 15, 20 minutes, just absorbing our surroundings and really appreciating the, you know, the site before us. So uh, yeah, my, my top tip is to, to take your time with this. It's not a race and uh, yeah, really appreciate the scenery. So that's the end of day two and we are in Rewarden and staying at the Ben Loman bunk house. We've paid £30 each for a uh, bunk in a, in a shared male dormitory and uh, it's quite cosy in there. There's a wood burner downstairs and a kitchen where you can cook your own food and they also have an honesty box where if you didn't bring your own food with you, you can purchase some items from the kitchen there and cook those yourself. There's pizzas and tins of soup and things like that. If you don't fancy doing that though, you can walk back down to a hotel, probably about 15 minutes walk from here, where they've got a pub and they do like a full menu and things. In terms of today, it was absolutely breathtaking. I hope that some of the footage that I got will you know, show you that, but. You know, if I think about it, you must be hard pressed to find a day of hiking anywhere in the world that is as beautiful as the scenery that I've seen today. It really, really is stunning. Um, from the frosty morning start up to the top of Connick Hill and those views over Loch Lomond, and then as you come down and, and walk around the loch, it really, really was magical. And I feel really privileged to have been able to walk it and see it with my own eyes, really. It was stunning. Right, gonna go and get a hot meal in my belly now. Just had a nice warm bath and uh, yeah, I've got 20 miles to do tomorrow, so that's going to be a bit of a killer. I 